going on guys, it's Jubal Slimmer here, back with another video, and today, I'm making a reaction video on Miss Nightmare, so fair enough, let's get on to this video. By the way, I'm going to get more subscribers, over 200, and let's get more views on my videos, alright? Now before I start this, I'll be right back. Alright, find me on social media, find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube Gamer, Google Plus, and Snapchat. So, all right, all right, so I'll see you guys in a little bit. I have to get something real quick, but after that, I will uh, start my reaction video. All right. By the way, I have a little cold, so if you hear me coughing, don't get so white coughing and stuff. By the way, I'm going to do uh, a reaction video on Don Tracy videos that he, uh, excuse me, put it for his stuff and clown. Just to let you guys know, and the gameplay. All right. So I'll be right back. Be right back. All right, let's go. And if you hear someone in the background, it's gonna be someone else in the room. So just, uh, just let just let you guys know. All right. So we're watching Mr. Nightmare, uh, the top fourteen creepy uh, nightmare stories by Mr. Nightmare. So let's get in this video. I'm trying to get over, let's say, thirty views and over fifteen likes. Just to let you guys know. So when you guys are subscribed to my channel, right? It's always important to be active on someone's channel. If you're subscribed to their channel, you should be active on their channel. I mean, that makes sense. Like, why would you subscribe to a YouTuber and you're not active on their channel? It's like, why would you even subscribe to them? Did you hear me calling you? Uh, no. What you need? I want to talk to you. Uh, can you do it later? Yeah. Sorry about that. I have to go again.
Yeah. Sorry guys, I had to do something real quick. It's really important. Alright, so let's just get in the video. Alright. By Mr. Nightmare. He has a good channel. Mr. Nightmare. Yeah, in fact, it's on someone's channel. I have to go to someone's channel. There we go. Alright. I was looking for a car to buy for my son for his 18th birthday. I was searching all the typical car websites, cars.com, eBay Motors. They were all overpriced as expected. Craigslist was the only place to find an actual deal. About a week into my search, I found an 03 Toyota Camry. It had 67,000 miles. No accidents, no damage, and good condition for only 3500 That's not a lot of money. This seems like a steal for such a reliable car with such low mileage. The seller lived about 10 miles from me, which was a reasonable drive when looking for a car. I gave him a call to set up a time to come check it out. The man sounded normal on the phone. He assured me that there were absolutely no problems with the car. He introduced himself as Bob. I brought along 3500 in cash, even though I planned on wiggling down the price as much as possible. I pulled up the dirt road to Bob's property about 15 minutes early. It was a tiny little house with a decent sized property, only because it was a bit far from the nearest neighbors. The garage was open, so I walked over to see if anybody was inside, but except for an unusual amount of car parts, it was empty. The car was nowhere in sight. The only car on the property was an old pickup truck. I went over to the front door to check the house numbers. It was the right address. The doorbell button was missing, so I knocked on the front door. I knocked for exactly five minutes before deciding to give the man a call. So I dialed his number and I heard the sound of a cell phone ringing from inside the house. I was extremely confused at this point. Now I knew I had the right house. I didn't understand why, if he was home, why he wasn't answering. I decided I had to take a peek through one of the windows to see if anybody was inside. Peering through the glass, I couldn't really see much as it was pretty dark inside the house. I saw a very old-fashioned dining room set, but across from that, I saw somebody standing at the back door of the house, staring outside. I figured that must have been Bob. So I knocked on the window, but he didn't even move. There was no gate or anything to the backyard. It was just a wide open yard since this wasn't a rural area. I simp- They put your money from now on. Every day. And I go to the lab every day. Ask for lunch and go. If it's a four day school, that's not ask for lunch and just go and I need help with science. Okay. Are you good? How do you feel better? I feel you need that third floor? Yeah, I need that third floor. You feel better? Yeah. Okay. I need a little room before I go to bed. Huh? I need a little room before I go to bed. Yeah, before we go to bed. Uh -huh. Next time you can probably just 12.30. Okay. Okay. Uh, Alright. Good night, baby. Good night. Good night. Okay. Tomorrow, stay. Do work stuff that you met, uh, didn't complete? Uh -huh. Alright. Alright. around the house to the backyard. I didn't understand how he couldn't hear me. When I got to the back door, 
I made a shocking realization. The figure standing by the door was a taxidermied human being. What the? I ran straight back the way I came and back to my car. I looked up one last time before driving off. The blinds to the window I had peeked into had been shut, but I could see two of the blinds bent open. Somebody was at that window watching me. You can probably guess I had the gas pedal to the floor the whole way home. No crap. The whole situation still makes no sense. All the car parts, the fact that there was no Toyota Camry, the taxidermied human being. No crap, I would have my foot on the gas pedal no too. I saw someone to at the back door. Whoever that man was, wasn't planning on selling me anything. And that also leads to the disturbing thought that I was very close to becoming a lifeless statue staring out that man's back door. That's just weird. I was on tour trying to find some really deep websites. I was in a chat room where people normally shared links to deeper websites and weird pictures and videos, commonly illegal pornography. Some guy named Vintage Triple X posted a link without describing what it was. I clicked on it and it took me to a black screen where a big video box eventually popped up with a play button. The video thumbnail was a dark room only lit by a TV screen. Out of curiosity, I clicked play and began to hear the sound of TV static in the background as lines of static slowly swam down the video screen. There was no seek bar on this video. Then I noticed something slowly begin to emerge from behind the wall. It was a figure dressed in all black with some kind of black mask on as well. I started to suspect it was a jump scare video, and I thought I was right when the figure leaped out and ran to the screen in less than a second. It still got me, even though I was expecting it, but then it got strange. The person had their face in front of the screen, slowly moving around as if he could see me and was observing me. Then I heard a crackly, demonic voice say something. It came from the video. It repeated itself, and I could make the phrase out to be, ask me something. I was really confused. I tried to type something, but there was nowhere to enter text. Then he said, No, not the keyboard. Say something. Don't say I that. felt my heart punch the inside of my chest as he said this. I opened my mouth and mumbled the words, You can hear me? Uh? It responded with, Yes. I was uncomfortable now. I thought it was a video. I pressed pause, but it didn't do anything. He said, Don't try to leave. I want to talk. I tried moving the mouse to the exit button, but the mouse was frozen. In fact, none of the keys were responding on my keyboard. There was a long moment of silence before my webcam began flashing as if it were on, and my face popped up on the screen. There, I got a picture of you now. Now just hang on while I get your address, and then we can meet. I started to panic, smashing every key on the keyboard, spazzing the mouse, but it did nothing. I had my finger on the power button, but it also didn't do anything. Take out the battery. The computer wouldn't turn off. The voice was saying crazy things like, You're stuck here. I will find you. Don't even bother. I snatched the screwdriver sitting on my desk, unscrewed the four screws on the bottom of my laptop, and took out the battery. The computer finally turned off. I was gasping for air as if I just ran a marathon. My heart was pounding five times as fast as it should have. I have since left my laptop off after that, and I've resorted to using my desktop as my main computer. I'm sure by now nothing will happen. He definitely didn't have enough time to get my address. It was very common for me to be home alone at night as I only lived with my dad, and his shifts would constantly shift from days to nights. This happened around the time my dad was doing <coughs> night shifts. Excuse me. I would stay up really late on these nights watching movies. It's always taken me a long time to fall asleep, so after turning off the TV to go to sleep, I probably laid there for a good half hour. Then, I heard a toy fall over in my toy closet. It was nothing too suspicious, but it still creeped me out. 
But then the doorknob to my closet started to wiggle until finally unlocking the door. I hid under my covers, not making a sound. It was strangely quiet for a good two minutes, so I finally peeked my head out of the covers. There was a figure standing next to my bed, looking down at me. I screamed at the top of my lungs and began hugging the wall behind me. The figure looked out the window and then just walked away out of the room. I stayed in that position for like an hour before checking if he was really gone. The front door was left wide open, so it seemed he had left. I didn't get a minute of sleep that night. God damn. This story is from the point of view of a 16 year old girl. I used to have a boy living next door to me that was obsessed with me. His name was Joey. Every time I would go outside, Joey would come outside as well, as if he were watching me through his windows waiting for me. He was 17 and very weird, and he didn't seem to have any friends as he was always home. I tried to give every sign possible that I didn't like this guy, but he wouldn't get the message. So I had to finally just tell him one day that I don't like him and to leave me alone. The look on his face that day is something that won't leave me. It was the kind of angry look a toddler gives their parents when they can't have a toy. Coming from a 17 year old, that's much more disturbing. One night, my parents left me to watch the house. I was working on a school project when I felt my bed shift a little bit. I looked under my bed. I screamed as I saw Joey laying under my bed. I ran away while he tried to crawl out from under my bed. I ran to his house and rang the bell at least ten times, telling his parents about it when they opened the door. Joey never came out of my house, so I called the police. His parents begged me not to, but I ignored them. The police found him still in my room and arrested him. Apparently, he admitted this wasn't the first time he had hid under my bed. They also found pictures of me scattered across his room. The most disturbing one was of me sleeping, and it was taken from inside my room. Creep. Working the night shift always sucked. I work in an office building and would constantly do the night shifts since it was the only time it would work out for me. I was just about always the only person on the floor I worked on, possibly in the whole building. There would always be a kind of eerie feeling to be in such a big building with most of the lights out and absolutely no one around. But on the upside, it was peaceful and less stressful, and I was able to get a lot of work done. There was this one night, though. It was a Friday night, around 2 in the morning. I was typing away on my keyboard when I heard a noise from outside my cubicle. It sounded like just a random crack from the walls or something. It's unusual in this building, but I didn't get too concerned about it. I resumed typing away and was once again interrupted by a sound. This time, the sound of a computer starting up. It caught me off guard. I, I was sure nobody else was working the night shift. I stood up on my chair to get a view over the cubicle walls. The glare of a computer screen in the dark was visible in a cubicle on the opposite side of the room. Then I did something stupid, something I regret. I asked if there was anybody there and a Why would you ask if anybody's an there? from a fellow employee. But instead, I saw the glaring light of the computer monitor across the room turn off, and there was once again nothing but darkness on that side of the room. I started getting nervous. I turned off the lamp and computer screen so that I wouldn't give away my position to whoever that was. I crouched down and tiptoed out across to a nearby cubicle. There was just utter silence. I sat waiting for something to happen for god knows how long, but I eventually decided the coast was clear. I tiptoed down past all the cubicles until I reached the opening near the exit door to the stairs and elevators, and that's when I realized that my fearful suspicion was true. There was a man crouched down behind a plant in the corner of the room dressed in all black. I felt my heart sink as I noticed him, but it didn't seem like he knew that I noticed him. I turned back to the stairway door. There was no way I was going to wait for the elevator and take a chance. I casually opened the door and closed it behind me, proceeding to walk down the stairs. After making it down about two flights of stairs, I heard the door above me push open aggressively, followed by manic echoing footsteps coming fast down the stairs. 
I raced down the stairs, running as fast as I could, all while the footsteps above me were getting louder. I finally made it to the first floor, raced through the lobby, and out the front door. Whoever was in there didn't follow me. I immediately called the cops, along with one of my bosses. My boss said no one was scheduled to work except for me. The cops scanned the place from top to bottom. There was no one in there. I couldn't help them out with any description other than he was wearing all black. I did continue to do the night shift for about a week after that, with my boss allowing me to lock all possible entrances to the floor, including the elevators. But I still wasn't comfortable with it. So ever since, I've been doing the day shifts. That's smart. A piece of guy. This happened four years ago when I was still in high school. I was told to do my last delivery of my shift. I got in my car, which was a 1999 Camry, perfect for delivering pizzas. I GPS the address of my phone. I live up Sorry about that, guys. It's a uh, baby in the background. Drive. Sorry about that. I remember the sun was starting to set, so it was probably around 7 o'clock. I'd say after a good 15 minutes of driving through the foresty dirt roads, my GPS said I had arrived. It was an old little cottage-like house made almost entirely of wood. It was sitting all by itself in the middle of absolutely nothing but forest. The lawn was completely unkept, as the grass was almost at knee height. I was used to this kind of thing, so I didn't think much of it. I took the pizza to the front door. There was no doorbell, so I knocked loudly on the door. Within ten seconds, I heard the sound of footsteps hitting wood on the inside of the house. The footsteps made it to the door and stopped. I started to feel uneasy. I got the feeling that I was being watched. And that's when I noticed there was a peephole in the door. It's the pizza guy, I called out. I heard a low, harsh-sounding voice on the other side of the door, telling me to bring the pizza out back. Why would you bring the pizza out back for? I didn't for like it? the idea of going back no. there. Something didn't seem right. Are you sure, sir? I called out. He didn't answer my question. The sound of footsteps didn't move away from the door, so I had the feeling he was still watching me. <coughs> I almost found myself walking back to my car, but I decided I didn't want any trouble with my boss. The last time I brought a pizza back, he gave me attitude, so I reluctantly walked through the uncut grass and around the small house to the back. I remember there was a shed and a little patio back there. In the patio, there was a table with four chairs surrounding it. In one of the chairs, facing away from me, I saw the head of somebody sitting in the seat. I began walking over and said, Excuse me, but the person didn't even move an inch. Excuse me, I said again louder. Then from behind me, I heard, Psst, over here. I turned around to see a man poking his head out from the corner of the house, looking at me with a crazed smile. Come over here. I want to show you something. No. I freaked out, turned around, and ran around the house in the opposite direction. Back yeah, I would too. Car, for some reason, still holding hey. the pizza. I got in my car, started it, and got away from there. On my way back to the pizzeria, I pulled over to the side of the road and called the police. Eventually, I was informed that there was no sign of anybody having been in that house for a long time. I quit my delivery job a few days after that. I have no idea what would have happened to me had I gone up to that man. But to this day, I still wish I'd just turned my head to see who or what was sitting in that patio chair. What the? Yeah, that's crazy. That's a crazy story. That's why they tell you never go by yourself. It was during a blizzard in Valley Stream. I was getting paid $250 to watch some couple's kid while they went away for the weekend. His name was Matthew. This took place on the first night, which was a Friday night. Matthew was already supposedly asleep while I was in the living room watching a movie. I got a knock at the door and looked at the clock. It was close to midnight. There was no way I was opening it. Not even ten seconds later, I heard the sound of two or three men angrily banging on the door, telling me to open up. A 
felt like my heart was about to stop. I took a peek through the blinds, and there was somebody standing right on the other side of the window. Oh snap, that's scary. I fell back in fear. They trying to scare him to so he can open the door. I ran to the kitchen and if you know it's near midnight, the then why would you even open the door? They said because of the weather, it could take a while for an officer to get here. I was told to take the child and hide somewhere until an officer arrived. They wanted to keep me on the line, but I wasn't thinking clearly in the heat of the moment and hung up. However, it wasn't until I ran through the living room that I realized the banging had stopped. I took a second peek through the living room window. Nobody was there now. I heard the sound of glass shattering from a few rooms over. They tried to scare him. My knees started to feel weak as I realized they had just broken the window and were about to climb into the house. I had to run and get Matthew. I couldn't just leave without him. Of course, when I got upstairs, there was no time left to run back downstairs. They tried to scare a person, and after that, then they tried to break in the house. I covered Matthew's mouth with my hand as I ran with him into his People toy are closet. Weird. That's why you a few always protect yourself. dragged onto what felt like half an hour as we sat there Excuse in the me. dark closet. Matthew began to squeal as footsteps on the carpet reached the outside of his bedroom door. There was more than one person. They came inside. There weren't many places to hide in this room. I was actually reflecting on my whole life, so sure I was going to die. We heard the sound of a police siren outside, even from in the closet. And then I heard one of the men in the room mutter, Aw, oh, shit. I opened the door back up as I heard at least three pairs of footsteps hurriedly rushing down the stairs. They didn't get far as the police later found their footprints in the backyard, leading to our shed. There were five men in total, and they were all arrested. That's that weird crap. Hey, Thundy. This happened when I was 15 years old. My best friend Andy wanted this. me to come over for the night since his parents would be gone all weekend. I rode my bike over and put it in his backyard before letting myself in through his back door. We played basically every video game he had, from FIFA all the way to Call of Duty, with popcorn and other junk food spilled out all over the floor. As the night progressed, we moved from video games to watching half a movie and getting bored to doing prank calls at close to 10 o'clock. I would do the same Anthony thing. Anthony made a few calls to different pizza places. Eat pizza. When it was my turn, I just dialed a few calls, random watch numbers movies, in hopes TV. to get someone at their house. On, say, my fourth attempt, I finally reached somebody. A guy with a deep and rough voice picked up, answering with a yeah instead of a hello. Anthony's laughing in the background made me stumble with my words mid-sentence, ultimately cracking up into laughter. I had never done a prank call, so I sucked at it. The guy on the other end was silent. I regained a straight face and tried to continue with the call. It went something like this. Uh, sir, would it be alright if I borrowed one of the wheels from your car? What's your name, kid? My name is Bob. Really? You sure it's not Anthony? It hit me like a brick. I looked up at Anthony, whose face was noticeably full of fear. That's that creepy stuff. Don't you know that stuff that like that? You should hang up the phone. Was for another second. Anthony, who the hell was that? I asked him. I, I don't know, he told me. Does your caller ID info display your name or something? No, That's that weird it shows crap. my dad's name. We hopped on the computer and did some research, trying to figure out how it was possible to get someone's name through their phone number. It didn't make sense how he could get Anthony's name so quickly. He was way too young at the time to be on any of those personal information sharing websites. We ended up asking a question on Yahoo Answers, since no one had a similar experience. The question turned up no answers. I suggested he call his dad, but he said he wasn't supposed to have anybody over for the weekend, so he didn't want to call. We planned on sleeping in the living room, so we just resumed watching the movie that we hadn't finished from earlier. Right after the phone call had left my mind, me and Anthony looked at each other when we heard his front storm door opening, and then the doorknob to the front door began to turn. It only was able to turn about halfway before the lock restricted it. Anthony turned off the TV, and I went over to the window to see who it was. 
I spread the blinds open. There was a tall guy standing outside. He noticed the blinds moving and turned to look at me. I practically threw the blinds back into place. Me and Anthony hid in the kitchen, listening for any more noises. We heard the sound of the gate to the backyard opening, as it was right outside the kitchen window. God damn it, I said. I forgot to shut the back door. He already Anthony stuck urged her down. me to run and shut it. I made it to the hallway leading to his back door Too late and now. froze. There was a silhouette standing outside the back he already door. There. Too late now. I don't think he noticed me, but he was surely looking into the house. He opened the door and stepped inside. I tiptoed to the kitchen and motioned for Anthony to follow me upstairs. We made it to his room as quietly as possible, pulling the door shut to avoid making any noise. We crawled under his bed. He had cloth covering the bottom of his bed, so you couldn't see anything under it unless you actually moved the cloth. The doors downstairs all opened, each one getting closer to the stairs. Thumps finally began up the stairs, and he was right outside the door now. The door to the room opened. I could hear Anthony's breathing. It was too loud. You better, you better keep that quiet. Footsteps moved over to the closet, and then the closet opened. I could hear the coat hangers being slid around as the fabric of the jackets and coats rubbed against each other. Footsteps moved over to the bed and stopped. I felt like my heart was about to explode out of my chest. Anthony's breathing was too loud. I had to cover his mouth with my hand. Nothing but silence in the room now. We laid still for so long, I almost thought he wasn't even in the room anymore. I moved my hand away from Anthony's mouth and whispered in his ear, You think we can make a run for it? He was about to answer, when the most disturbing, memory-haunting scream I'd ever heard filled my ears as Anthony was seemingly dragged out from under the bed. I crawled out and saw him struggling with the man. I desperately looked around for anything to use as a weapon. I settled with I remember this one. This is on Mr. Nightmare's man. channel. I hurried over uh, to the if you and search it up, it's one of his back. videos, but it's like 14 he videos though. But it's like um, Llama Arts. It's called out the, the house. Sleepover uh, Stories. You know, the road would give it's kind of creepy. Too easily. Too long so just check it out, Mr. House. Nightmare's channel. He been made this about a year ago. So just check it out. The back door opens as the man stepped outside. Yeah, what's his intention? Because he prank called them, and then now he how did he find out place. their address? And then his eyes pass me he found he out their name and address. Line. I don't know. He pr it's probably an IP it address. It was too dark for him to see us. Then he turned his head back in our direction. I ducked behind the bush. Sorry about the noise Joe, in the background. That's uh, ba my baby cousin. What? Dude, get up. We gotta run. He was right. The man was approaching us fast. How could he have seen us? We ran through the woods with the leaves crunching under us, giving away our position. When Anthony tripped over something, I crouched down with him, hoping we had run far enough. Not even twenty seconds later, oncoming footsteps from the direction we were running from came fast. They slowed down only two trees away from us as we lay face down in the leaves. Moments later, the footsteps take off in another direction. We waited Looking until we could no longer hear them. I took off back in the direction of the house. While running, over the sound of leaves crushing and my heavy breathing, I could swear I heard leaves crushing from behind us. We made it back to his backyard, into his house, and this time remembering to shut the back door. We were now able to call the police. Anthony stayed on the line with them, while I patrolled the back windows making sure nobody was out there. It was so dark though, I couldn't see anything. So I did something that seemed stupid today. I turned on his back Damn, door. Why would you turn on the back door and immediately in the distance, over by the woods, I saw him standing in front of a big tree. He turned off back into the woods and disappeared out of sight. That was the last time me or Anthony ever saw him. I would be lying if I told you we heard the occasional knocks at our windows or something cliche. No, that was it. Five years have passed and nothing has happened. Do I wonder if it was somehow linked to the prank call? It probably was. Maybe. Does it make sense? Not really. But yeah, 
This was the story of how me and my still best friend Anthony almost died during a break-in. That's crazy. That's really crazy. They were smart, though, but he made a wrong decision. Alright, so this is going to be the end of the reaction video. I just wanted to do um, uh, scary stories, about four or five of them, because this video is like 53 minutes long, which is 30 more minutes. Um, I hope you guys are having a good time in school. Um from your Christmas break, happy 2017, happy new year, um, just to let you guys know, I'll be doing another video too, and another gaming video, and, uh, reaction video coming up, so hope you guys, uh, check in that, alright, uh, probably I might be doing one later on, and, then uh, doing one probably tomorrow though, because tomorrow I'm really busy, I gotta finish some stuff and do some stuff, so I'm really busy though, uh, during the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm not doing it, because I have homework and stuff to do, and chill, but Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's when I might do it. So I'm going to upload it Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. But if I have something going on like Saturdays in the morning, then I do it like afternoon or late evening. Just to let you guys know. All right. Check out at the Gamers YT. Um, he's a YouTube friend. He featured my channel. Also, check out Mr. Nightmare. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And stay awesome. Um, I'm sorry about the constant um, like talking in the background. But, you know, I had to do something. So sorry about that. Like, I couldn't pause the video. So sorry about that. Sorry about the uh, constant talking, though. But I hope you guys like this video. And I see you guys in the next one. And my goal is to get over 200 subscribers and at least 15 likes. All right? So if you guys want to check out my channel to new subscribers, please check out my channel. It's a good channel. And I see you guys next time. All right? All right. Peace out. And I see you guys in the next video. Like three or four videos are coming up um, shortly. So I'll see you guys next time. Peace.